listening to A State of the Union, estate planning made simple. Here's your host, Brad Wewell, from the Wewell Law Firm in Austin, Texas. Hi, this is Brad Wewell with the Estate of the Union, our podcast from Texas Trust Law, the Wewell Law Firm, and we are having a, a fantastic time today uh, talking about pre-planning your funeral. Woohoo! Ta-da! <laughs> Grace, why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? Yes, my name is Grace Cook. Um, I've been in the funeral industry for about two years now. That whole time, my sole job has been helping families plan their funerals ahead of time and make sure they got their plans in order. Um, I work with Harold Funeral Homes, which is the largest family-owned and uh, operated funeral home in the city of Austin. Uh -huh. They're great, been around for about 40 years, and so that's been my experience with it so far. Well, great. So let's just talk about why somebody should pre-plan their funeral. And ladies and gentlemen, let me just say this. Grace is an experienced, awesome uh, <laughs> pre-planner. But like our office, your firm, you don't really have to take a number to get in line because most people don't want to do mm -hmm. estate planning because mm -hmm. they... It deals with death. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do pre-planning a funeral because it deals with death. But they do need an estate plan and they do need a pre-planned funeral. So, but yes. why? Yeah, and I think we do see some hesitations with people getting started in the process, mm -hmm. of course, because of the nature of the topic that mm -hmm. we're discussing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think when people really understand the importance of planning ahead is when it becomes a little bit easier to have that conversation. So um, I think it is important for people to plan ahead and why somebody would want to is because the majority of the reason is it takes off the burden from the family, right? Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. somebody does mm -hmm. pass away and they don't have plans, it can add to their grief to be able to go, to have to go through all of those logistics, to have to make decisions that maybe your family didn't have any conversations about what that loved one's wishes were. And so people are either guessing or just trying to do their best and then they have to figure out how to finance it and that can be a stress as well. And so it's so important to even get your estate in order, get your plans in order to make sure that you are setting your family up and your loved ones up for success. Well, and that's right. And let, let's just say this. Um, I've been doing this work for a long, long mm -hmm. time, and it is awful to lose somebody. Mm -hmm. And we all kind of think that, well, even with a long illness, we, we yeah. you know, we'll get this, we're going to get around to it, we're going to get around to it, we know we need to do it, we're going to get around to it, we're going to get the will, don't get a will. We deal with plenty of families here with no planning, mm -hmm. people that knew the loved one was terminal, no mm -hmm. planning then when they die, frankly, it's such a shock. Yeah. And it's a shock if it's a sudden death, mm -hmm. too. And then they go to Harold Funeral Home or another funeral home, and they're trying to figure out what to do, and it's just awful. Mm -hmm. It is awful. But if you plan ahead, then I think, mm -hmm. quite literally, somebody can push a button, yep. and it all rolls out. Yep, exactly. And that's the goal, right, is to have everything laid out, not only your wishes as far as what kind of services you want, or burial versus cremation, all of that kind of information, but also some of the logistical things of how are you gonna pay for it, what's the pieces of information like, you know, your mom's mom's name, or where were they born, all that kind of stuff that right. we don't really think about all the time. The funeral home needs that, and if we have it on file already, we just take out the file, the funeral director moves forward. Really, the only thing the family has to do is set a time and date for a service. Wow. Wow. Um, and so wow. that's the goal, right? It, it takes so much off the plate and allows the family to then focus on grieving and being together and not having to worry about all the logistics. Because again, we all like to think <laughs> when somebody dies, we, we all get together mm -hmm. and we're all very reverential <clears throat> and we're all very respectful and that's not always the case. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, that is I'm not I'm sure you've seen case. that a ton as well. I'm sure you have too. <laughs> I'm sure yes. you have too. And, and what, what can happen is that, you know, if, now, if there's a surviving spouse and this is an intact family, the kids are going to be, again, respectful of typically mom, dad, you know, what do you want to do? And mom, mm -hmm. dad kind of get the final say. But if it's the second spouse... Mm -hmm. The kids, get, and I'll tell you a story in a second yeah. about my own family, but if it's a blended family, mm -hmm. 
and it's the step parent mm -hmm. dealing with the step children and the step children have their ideas and the surviving step spouse has different ideas mm -hmm. um, this could be nuclear war yes and that that is the thing that is one of the saddest things to it's gotta see. It's got to be awful. Sure, yeah, you when, see it. When families come in and, you know, they should be focusing on celebrating their loved one, right. celebrating the life that they had, the impact that they made, and they're spending their time kind of at, coming at each other right. for different reasons. Um, it really is just a shame because that, that that's when you need the family the most. Um, and so when you have your plans already laid out, there can't really be an argument, right? Right. It's, We've got it on right. paper. This is what mom said she wanted, and so this is what we're going to do. Um, and sure. you can't, you can't really. Attest she's to made that. the decision, so mm -hmm. you don't have to make the decision. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And she's prepaid it. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to worry about where we're going to come up with the money for this because funerals can be yeah. expensive. Mm -hmm. So how does somebody even start mm -hmm. pre-planning the funeral? Yeah. So um, I would recommend getting, you know, connected with your local funeral home. What they'll do is they have somebody like me who will sit down and. We start having those conversations. Um, again, this conversation is not, we, we say it's not really a dinner table conversation, right? Most of us aren't sitting there. Right, you're saying, hey, do we ever yeah. tell you about this, <laughs> exactly. right? And what these kind of exactly. flowers and this song and yeah. all that. Yeah, right. make sure you write this down just in case. You never know. You know, people don't right. do that. Right. Most people don't. And so um, starting that conversation with a professional is really, really helpful because they'll be able to help guide you through, okay, on the funeral home side, what are we going to need? And how do we take that down? You know, Harold Funeral Homes has uh, what we call a final wishes organizer. So it's basically this um, tool that we use and it, it has a place for you to write down all of the information that we need. It uh -huh. has a place to take down your military records, your, the flower preference, music preferences, uh -huh. but then we also discuss services, burial versus cremation, and if you're having trouble with that decision, we kind of help walk you through that. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But having somebody on the inside that knows what the funeral home is going to need is really, really helpful. Um, there's plenty of tools you can even just Google that can kind of help get you started on things to think about. Okay. Okay. Um, but I always tell people, even even the, the littlest bit of information that you can gather is one step closer to helping your family even more and more. So just get it started. Well, mm -hmm. and I, I, if, if you've watched any of our other or listened to any of our other podcasts, you might have heard me say this, but the mortality rate mm -hmm. in the state of Texas, in the state of Wyoming, in the state of West Virginia, in the state of Wisconsin, in the United States, in China, in Russia, in Australia, in Canada, the mortality rate is 100%. Mm -hmm. Nobody's getting out of here alive. Yep. <laughs> and so we can kind of sit back and go, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I know I need to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get around to doing it. But you really do need to do it. And Grace would be a wonderful person to start with, the Harold Funeral Home. Mm -hmm. Here in Austin, but again, you've got other avenues if you're someplace else to tack to touch into. But you really need to do this, and as you said, I mean, part of the estate planning process that mm -hmm. we focus on here so much is not the taxes, and it's not the how much Johnny or Judy is going to get. Mm -hmm. It's trying to craft a plan to minimize points of friction between the loved ones so that there is no fighting. Mm -hmm. And this is a place people can fight. So here's my story. So my mother died January 3rd of this year at mm -hmm. 94. And she had COVID at the end, but I don't think COVID killed her. Mm -hmm. kind of nudged her out. Yeah. My uh, brother, who is a wonderful guy, and my sister, who's a wonderful woman. This mm -hmm. is a little hometown, Quincy, Illinois. Uh -huh. 40,000 people on the Mississippi River in kind of western Illinois, and mom was kind of a luminary in Quincy. And my brother, Mark, uh, really wanted to do a full dress thing, a Catholic family, big Catholic church, you know, probably with social distance. He mm -hmm. could have sat 200 people, and he wants everybody there to kind of honor mom and yeah. my sister Tish, wonderful woman, lives in Chicago area, very concerned about COVID issues. And said, really, you know, I don't think I want 200 people there. I don't think I want anybody there except our immediate family, yeah. which was pretty common, yeah. uh, very common during the hardcore COVID days. And this is a family where we 
always have gotten along, mm -hmm. and there has never been a discouraging word, but now we have this issue that kind of came out of the blue. Yeah. And mom had done a lot of things in her life, but she had never pre-planned. Mm -hmm. And so I'm the middle kid, <laughs> all right? And so the middle kid got in the middle to try to work out a compromise, and we did work out a compromise, mm -hmm. thankfully. We did an immediate only family yep. funeral in January, and in August, uh, later in August, we're gonna do a celebration of life yep. and invite everybody in town. So it worked yeah. out well. But if mom had done more pre-planning, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't have had the risk, and in the most cohesive of families, a risk of a breakdown and a fight, and then, my experience with these kind of family fights, people never speak to each other again. Yes, absolutely. And um, I do a lot of aftercare as well, and so I follow up with the families mm -hmm. who have gone mm -hmm. through that experience, check in on them, see how they're doing. And um, it is a, when somebody passes away, it is a changing point in our life. Mm -hmm. it, it changes us, it, life looks different. And so oftentimes how that was handled and how that time went will forever be a marker um, right. in our hearts and in mm, our minds. Interesting. And so if it doesn't go smooth, which is okay, um, you know, sure. it, at the end of the day, we're all human, um, but whatever whatever tends to be a hiccup can oftentimes be an, an extra point of grief yes. that uh, is hard to heal from. Interesting, um, sure. And so w even, like you said, with the most cohesive of families, a lot of times people grieve very differently as well, and sometimes, uh, conflict happens that maybe wouldn't happen if you know if, if it wasn't something so heightened or they weren't right. dealing with well grief. they're just raw emotions exactly very raw emotions right. and so taking out any kind of barrier mm -hmm. is is helping the family more and more to just focus on being and not being stressed out or you know just their heads spinning already right. <laughs> and right. so making your plans and doing your estate planning all that kind of stuff is just helping them be able to coast as much as possible coast as much mm -hmm. as possible it's a really good way to say yeah. it so we have burial, there's cremation, um, kind of, what do people do these days? Yeah, we, uh, it's honestly pretty 50-50. Of course, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago, it was majority burial, sure. so we are seeing cremation become more popular. Um, with that, we are seeing, you know, especially with COVID and working from home and everybody's kind of moving different places. We are, instead of, it used to be, right, where your whole family is from one small town and mm -hmm. everybody's buried mm -hmm. in the same cemetery. Right. And now we've got families that, you know, one kid lives on the East Coast, one on the West, one in Texas, and we're all over. And so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's kind of shifted the way we do funerals and celebrations of life as well, which is why we've seen an cre uh, increase in cremation. Um, Have you done a Zoom funeral? I have, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, right. yeah, we, yeah, we do them quite often, especially at, at when we were in the height of COVID. Right. Um, we've seen a lot more often um, these days as well, people delaying services, um, kind of like you and your okay. family. Okay, interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. sure, sure. Because, we, especially that kind of started with COVID, but we, we pivoted to be able to, you know, we can do the Zoom service or we can do the service and we can uh, broadcast it on the web. So if a family member who is out of state can't make it in, in time or you know is afraid of um, Infection, being cautious whatever. yeah sure. um, <clears throat> then they're still able to participate That's in really a virtual manner which it, we just didn't have that um, before covid right um, and so we've switched that but then also people will say you know what let's just get this taken care of you know let's do the interment whether it's burial or cremation and then we'll do a service later on when people can actually plan to come in. Um, okay, you know, we've seen the same trend with weddings, right? <laughs> people have celebrated right. and That's delayed. Right. That's it's right. So we'll do the small ceremony parallel. and then we'll do the wedding yeah. reception exactly. a couple months down the road. Exactly. Oh, same thing. Yeah. Both of them are a big celebration, big changes in our life, right? Right. And so the, the trends, we, we honestly see them follow each other. Surely <laughs> have. You guys have really become very flexible. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because I think most people, like maybe, uh, kind of picture the funeral home industry as a stodgy, mm -hmm. you know, go in and there's a casket and blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. really, you guys are rock and roll. Yeah. Way. I mean, literally, the other day I walked into the funeral home for work and there was a service going on. Um, and I walk in and there's like loud ACDC <laughs> music huh, playing. No kidding. And huh. I was like, what is going on? And it was the, somebody from... Um, he was a part of a motorcycle group, and uh, so he had, they had all their motorcycles out front, and they did the uh, whole, um, they did like a lap around the the street in honor of him, and it was it was really a party. Huh, um, huh, and so we're seeing huh. you know celebrations of life kind of 
translate into things yeah. like that. Okay. Some people really do like the you know somber, calm, sure, all sure. that kind of stuff, but thing, you we can to. really do anything. Oh, that's really, really <laughs> cool. Right, so this is Harold Funeral Home here in Austin. Mm -hmm. um, so people are starting to travel now. Mm -hmm. Um, and let's say that um, I'm on a vacation in Europe and I'm hit by a taxi cab in Rome and I'm killed. Um, is there a benefit to pre-planning in that city? Absolutely. So, so what we would do in that kind of instance is when people plan through Harrell, and most funeral homes will have some sort of program like this, um, but we, we include in out of area protection. Okay. So what that is, is if you're away from your home, and that's whether you're in Rome, you know, enjoying um, Italy, or if you're, um, you know, visiting family down in Corpus Christi, or just going to the beach, or whatever it may be, um, if you happen to pass away in anywhere outside of your home, it covers the cost and the logistics to bring you back to Harold, so then we can carry out whatever plans you have in your pre-plan. Oh, I'll be done. All right, so you yes. guys will take the body and get it back. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have that protection, so say somebody doesn't take the time to plan ahead, they don't have that protection, what would have to happen um, is that they would have to get you know, uh, a funeral home in Rome. You ha have to get them involved. And they, and they speak Italian. Uh huh. Maybe not English. Yes, yes. Um, I actually, right. it's funny that you bring up that um, example because my cousin actually passed away suddenly in Rome a couple years ago. Oh, we don't. Okay. Yes. He, we did not talk about this before. No, we didn't. So. <laughs> All right. Yes. So I watched my aunt and uncle go through that process of getting him back over to the United States so then they could have a service. Sure. And it took a couple of months, right? Because they wow. have to do huh. um, the, the different governments, the red tape, have, all uh, that customs, kind of stuff. I guess, yes, right? exactly. So huh. especially once somebody passes away, it's a whole nother ball game of dealing with a mortal body. So um, they it took months to get him back here for them for then th them to have And again they're grieving and they're trying to exactly, deal with all this stuff. Exactly. And, wow. So if if you're, you know, people that go on cruises or even that have family in other states, it is very, very wise to yes. look into planning ahead and to getting that protection just so you know at the end of the day, no matter where I am, what I'm doing, if I pass away, it's not going to be a burden for my family. It's Great. all taken care of whether I'm local or whether I'm traveling or whether I'm wow. out of state or anything like that. Wow. All right. Mm -hmm. That's really good advice, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Really good advice. So, I don't know this either. I'm, I'm a little bit maybe, but how do people actually pay for a pre-planned funeral? Mm -hmm. So um, this is a nationwide. Funeral homes legally cannot hold the funds until death occurs, right? And oh, that's so, interesting. Okay. Yeah, so that is to protect the consumer. Um, right, so if I send you $10,000 and you go to business, I've lost my money. Exactly, right, exactly. So. so we put it with a third party. Okay. Third party is usually a life insurance company. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and it, I, I Sometimes people get confused when I mention life insurance because then they're like, oh, a whole life or a term life yeah, or what am I? You have to be in good health to get Yes, life exactly, right. exactly. So it, it's actually a prepaid funeral contract. Okay. So it's like a, it's basically a specific product to be able to pay for your funeral. Okay. And what's listed on that is all the items that you, you've purchased. So it has, you know, the visitation and the amount that you paid and okay. the funeral service and the embalming, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So we know your plans. You're paying for all of that. When you do pay ahead of time, it locks in the cost, which is a benefit as well. Oh, that's nice. So mm -hmm. if I don't die for 30 years. Yep. Yep. This it's is all it. taken care of. That's nice. it. All right. Um, which is a huge benefit with inflation and all that oh, kind I'm of sure. stuff. I'm sure. But yeah. um, the third party holds the funds. And actually, in the state of Texas, those funds are also um, insured by the Texas Department of Banking and Insurance. Okay. So both of those. And um, so, so the insurance kind of goes out of the business. The, the state's still there too. Mm -hmm, yep, the state's required to provide oh, nice. the money. Okay, so good. and in the state of Texas you you really can't go wrong this with is very planning ahead. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I would bet other states probably have a similar yes, system too. Yes, sure. Absolutely. And so um, that's kind of what it looks like is you you know, you would plan through the funeral home. So again, I, I usually sit down with families, plan it all out, I put together the the paperwork and everything and just the they pay directly to the insurance company rather than to Harold Funeral oh, I'll be Homes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right. then they have a, a basically a life insurance contract right. um, that they have, in, which you know brings in another thing of it's transferable because it's with a life insurance company. Okay. If the family moves to right. Dallas or even to out of state, sure. they can take their plan with them. Um, oh, I'll they be just there. Okay. change it from Harold Funeral Homes as my provider to, to Smith Funeral Home exactly. in Las Vegas, Nevada. Exactly. So huh. it provides a lot of flexibility for the family. They're not, you know, <laughs> locked into one thing, one place. Right. Um, which is a really great benefit as well. No, that's right. I did mm -hmm. not know that either. Yeah. All right. So I don't have to have good health. 
Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm in a wheelchair. I know that yep. I'm going to die soon, and I could still yep. get this special life insurance. Yep, thing. exactly. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's kind of talk about, we've talked around it, uh, mm -hmm. how has COVID mm -hmm. affected your work? Yeah. Um, it uh, It's honestly put the fact that hundred percent. Yep, our hundred percent right. mortality. Right. It's brought it to the top of people's minds, which you know is not necessarily something we would want, but also it is important to think about. So right. it is good that you know people are that maybe normally wouldn't be thinking about these things are thinking. You know what? What if something? If I were to get sick and pass away within the span of two weeks, you know, what would my family do? Am I prepared for that? Mm -hmm. And so um, we have had a lot of people, you know, wanting to learn more information, wanting to get things set up because of that. Right. Which I think is you know. A, a good in a way, a roundabout way, effect of everything that's been going on, um, <clears throat> because they've also been able to see friends and family members who have, you know, have lost people they've loved uh, mm -hmm. suddenly, or you know, maybe they had a, a terminal illness or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and when they go through that experience or see somebody go through that experience, then it, it makes them realize, oh wait a second, I need to be thinking about this these could be things. Me. Mm -hmm. This could be me. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned the motorcycles. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about the stodgy approach. Uh -huh. I mean, what kind of planning could I do with you guys? Yeah, anything, really anything. So, okay. um, you know, it depends. The kind of services that we have, some people will do a backyard barbecue, you know, something oh, really, really relaxed. Oh, really? And, huh. Yeah, huh. And, and in that sense, of course, the funeral home can be involved to execute that. Right. But oftentimes the family just says, you know what, you just, you just take care of, you know, the burial or the cremation, and then we'll, in our own time, we'll invite people over and we'll take care okay. of it. Um, if you're using a facility like our funeral home or a church or like a third party, right. the funeral directors can be in charge of doing all of that planning. And, mm -hmm. you know, that way we're funeral directors are, ca are called undertakers for a reason, right? They undertake all the responsibility. Oh, no, that's <laughs> interesting. Okay, see, yes. we learn a lot on this podcast. Right, right. We, that's the answer to that question. Why do they call them undertakers? Yes, All right. it is. So you heard it, it here first, folks. <laughs> heard it here first. Yeah, so they, but the, their goal, right, is to, they're the ones that are coordinating with the church and scheduling anything. And they're and licensed too, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, you have to be to be a funeral director. Okay. Um, you got a sp special schooling, all that fun stuff. Sure, sure. Um, I think I knew that. Yes. Right. So, um, yeah, the funeral directors take care of it all, and we can really, it's like we're wedding planners, right? We're party planners. When people ask me what I do, sometimes sure. I'll say that. <laughs> That's really fun. Um, because at That's the end really of the day, fun. we we, lo we want to celebrate and honor your loved one however mm -hmm. you feel is best i was actually talking to a lady yesterday who said you know i had a friend and her funeral was everything was sparkly there was flowers everywhere but that was her style right she was always put together always right. very you Locked. know yes exactly and so she was like if we had walked into her funeral and it was you know completely opposite very simple all that kind of stuff we would have been like you know what this doesn't really reflect her personality, mm -hmm. you know? Right. You want to walk in the room and... a little bit off. Right. Exactly. You want to walk in the room and have something set up to where you feel the presence of the person, whatever their, that was, their essence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Now, you mentioned this concept, which I don't know anything about either, mm -hmm. afterlife care. What is mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> what we do at Harold Funeral Homes is we um, have estate specialists okay. that sit down with the family, and they kind of walk through notifying Social Security of... The, the person's passing, closing out bank accounts, shutting down your phone number, protecting mm -hmm. against fraud, taking your name off the email and mailing list, okay. shutting down your digital accounts. You know, when you don't right. prepare, it's kind of like, well, shoot, I don't have any of their passwords. How do I get into mm -hmm. their Facebook? Or, right. You know, all that kind of stuff. And so they kind of help on the back end, as I'm sure you guys, you know, when it, you, you well, plan you do ahead. the official probate to yes, the state administration. Exactly, and, and that's like what... You guys can help a little bit on the front end. Exactly. We we do everything other than legal services, okay. right? So All we right. can help them close out anything or deal with anything. Um, <clears throat> but we, we provide that because we've seen time and time again families who, you know, either their family member didn't have their estate in order, mm -hmm. um, and then it's just totally a mess, and they spend up to... 18 months to two years trying to get everything in order. Mm -hmm. And when at the end of the day, you just want to put everything to bed, right? That's a you nice just service. Move That's a really nice mm -hmm. service because most people, again, don't know the first thing about planning the funeral again yeah. during crisis anyway. Yep. And then they've got just how do I write a check? Mm -hmm. how, do I, how do I shut off dad's uh, yes. uh, credit card? Yeah, like or that. getting access to life insurance money, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So it, there's lots of people who don't have paperwork all in one place. Mm -hmm. And so the mm -hmm. kids, 
it'll be, you know, two years later and then they realize, oh shoot, you know, dad still has funds out in this account that we never really knew about and right. it comes up and then you have to take care of it then. Right. And so we, uh, a common thing around here is we can't find dad's will. We don't mm -hmm. know where mom's will is. Mm -hmm. And you might have done a will. Yep. But if a will can't be found, you died without a will. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's a one or two tiny exceptions to that, but that's the general rule. So it sounds like the benefit of pre-planning is you can help the family get that lined up too. Yes, right? exactly, All exactly. Right. So at the end of the day, the goal of getting your estate you know, planned, of sure. getting your funeral planned ahead, of having that aftercare service is once somebody does pass away, your head's gonna be spinning, and a lot of people kind of need their, their hand held through the process of sure. just somebody who knows what to do and says, hey, we're gonna go do this, we're gonna do this, this is what we're doing next, mm -hmm. throughout the funeral planning, but then also the closing out of the estate. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of mm -hmm. our goal, is to help families be able to do that as easily as possible. Very good, mm -hmm. very good, very good. <laughs> a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So costs mm -hmm. um, are going to be, I presume, all over the board, too. So yeah, absolutely. Cremations are less? <clears throat> yeah, w w it depends on what you do, you know? All right, so this is a common, I think, uh, yes. thought. Well, it'll be less expensive. All you have to do is mm -hmm. incinerate me, put me in a bag, and Correct. send me home. But yeah, it depends on what you do, right? Of course, if we do that, you know, if the only thing the funeral home's doing is picking you up, doing the cremation, and giving you back to the family, that's fairly inexpensive. You know, Good. usually in Texas, we see that to be around... Fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars, depending on what you do and where you go. Okay. Um, and then it can be anywhere. It can, you know, a normal burials are usually around ten thousand dollars, and okay. a cremation can cost that much as well. Well, because um, some people want to be cremated and have their ashes buried too. Yes, exactly. And some religious faith, so mm -hmm. Catholics yep. uh, can be cremated, but they. The church doesn't want your ashes scattered. Mm -hmm. so you have to mm -hmm. put them someplace. A like columbarium. Yes, exactly. You, you, you have to be buried on sacred ground. So, right. um, normally a columbarium, any sort of cemetery. And things if you're like Muslim, that. you have a Muslim yep. and Jewish. Mm -hmm. and they're Jewish. And, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Everybody has their own things. But um, whenever I have lots of people that will come in and say, I don't really know between you know burial or cremation and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the way that I like to, to put it sometimes is, you know, it, it's just a form of disposition. You know, it's kind of like if you had a birthday party and all the wrapping paper, you know, at the end of the day, you're right. like, well, what do we do with the wrapping paper? Well, we can either recycle it, we can make, you know, paper mache balloons out of mm -hmm. it, you know, mm -hmm. we can do whatever, um, but we still had the party just the same. And well, so- Well, let me jump mm -hmm. off on this too, uh, because it's important, again, if you're gonna be cremated as well, to have a plan mm -hmm. for the ashes because- yes. I will tell you, based on my experience, when the guy goes first and his wife, there's no plan, so mm -hmm. she'll go by the funeral home, Harold Funeral Home, for instance, and a funeral director will come out and hear the, hear the ashes and here's the urn, and you know where the guy ends up? Back he of a closet. Tip, he, tip, <laughs> he, he stays in the trunk yep. as long as she can bear to have him in the trunk, mm -hmm. and then if he ever comes out of the trunk, yep. he goes in the closet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a wonderful client, and if she's watching or listening to this, she'll know the story, where she had her husband in the closet for so long, mm -hmm. the guilt welled up so much because mm. she really wanted to have his ashes scattered in his hometown of Missouri, that she sucked it up, she filled up the gas tank, she put him in the trunk again, drove to Missouri, mm -hmm. got to Missouri, couldn't do it. Oh. Couldn't do it, left him in the trunk, Drove back to Austin. He's back in the closet. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Bless his heart. Bless his heart. So you. So again, you know, think it all the way through. Yes. And Grace, you can help people because yes. you know all the questions and mm -hmm. you know all the issues. Yeah. And uh, you know, again, how to help you pay for all this. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to have options. You have a little menu. I think people. Yep. Go, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We have different different packages. Of course, everything can be customized and all that kind of stuff. But that's kind of there again to make it easier when people are over flood with right. decision making. It, it can be overwhelming. So we try to make it easy, but we can always customize to whatever the person needs. Well, the we will offer are called the peace of mind people. And mm -hmm. that's what we want. And you want the peace of mind then. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want it with your family. You want it with yourself. You don't want to fight. You don't want to be, have sticker shock. Oh my gosh, I didn't know it was going to cost this yeah. much. Um, and where I get the money, so you want to have it already paid for. I mean, this is simple stuff. We recommend that all of our clients 
get a prepaid funeral. Mm -hmm. That includes you, ladies and gentlemen. So whether you're a client of the We Will Law Firm, Texas Trust Law, yet, if you want to become one, we're happy to have mm -hmm. you. Uh, Harold Funeral Home is here in Austin, and uh, you have several locations? Yes, we have Austin, Kyle, and Dripping Springs. Very good, mm -hmm. very good. And so we have an office that we will law from Texas Trust Law in Austin, Georgetown, Horseshoe Bay, and San Antonio. But we deal with people all over the state of Texas, and you could yes, too. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if we can help you on the estate planning side, let us know. If Grace can help you on the prepaid side, prepaid funeral, pre-planned funeral, mm -hmm. uh, contact her too absolutely. at Harold Funeral Home. And uh, again, we try to bring things to you with, again, uh, a personal standpoint. We are uh, committed here to biblical values, and mm -hmm. we think this is an area when people fight, they're not exactly loving their brother yeah, absolutely. and sister the way they should. So this is an important piece of that, too. Um, we appreciate you listening. Yes. We appreciate you watching. Uh, our website is texastrustlaw.com. What's the Harold Funeral Home? Haroldfuneralhomes.com. H-A-R-R-E-L-L? -L? Yep, that's All right. correct. All right, great. So if Grace can help you. We can help you with the planning. We can help you again with the probate once you're done uh, with the funeral process. So mm -hmm. let us help. We'd be happy to help. And thanks for listening. Thanks, guys.